I don't discriminate when it comes to good games. If a game is fun, I'll gladly play it and enjoy it. It could be a children's game, or it could even be, uh, not safe for work. Yep, I'm making yet another video about porn. At this point, I've accepted the fact that my family will never be proud of me, and yes, they do watch my videos. So, let's just get started. What exactly makes a good adult game? As I already mentioned, if an adult game is actually good, I'll still play it. But adult games have an overwhelming tendency to kinda suck. As the saying goes, sex sells, and mediocre to downright terrible games can still perform well with audiences as long as they have the promise of sex scenes. I don't really like that mentality, and in fact, I think that when the general audience is so accepting of these terrible adult games, it makes it less likely for developers to want to actually make good games. This is because they can get just as much money for less effort. So here's what I think makes a good adult game. First things first. This may seem obvious, but it needs to actually be good as a game. Adult games rely heavily on a concept I talked about in my last video. Human beings love completing tasks and getting rewarded for them. When you make progress in an adult game, more often than not the reward is a sexy animation or CG. This combines the reward structure of most video games with the fact that people also like sex. This makes these games incredibly addictive. But if you take most adult games and alter them so that there was no sex, it would be obvious that they really, really aren't good. One of the more well-known adult developers is a guy by the name of Akabar. He makes games on the Renpai engine where you essentially train up the stats for one or more girls and make them more and more receptive to sexual activity. Now, Akabar is not alone in this. In fact, this is a fairly common format in adult gaming. Now, no hate towards the guy. He's doing his thing and is working well for him, and I'm happy for him. But his games would be terrible without the titties, as would most similar games. Quite frankly, continuously clicking through repetitive dialogue screens to generate the arbitrary amount of money or stat points you need to unlock the next sex scene isn't very fun. Now, let's look at a game that I think absolutely would stand on its own as a regular game. That game is Honey Pop. Honey Pop is a combination match 3 and dating simulator. To successfully date the various anime ladies, you have to score a certain number of points on a cascading match 3 board. There are also streamlined versions of common dating sim tropes, such as gift giving and character specific trivia which can give you points to upgrade your stats. I initially bought Honey Pop because I heard it was pretty funny, and worst case scenario, there were attractive ladies on offer. But before long, I found myself seriously enjoying the puzzle game, and would regularly play it for the game rather than the artwork. Whenever I unlocked an explicit CG, that was really more of a bonus than anything. It's sad to see that it's so rare to have adult games that are actually good, but at least it makes the quality products stand out. Okay, now I'm going to get a little more specific from here on out. Instead of talking about what makes an adult game good as a game itself, I'm going to talk about what makes it good within the context of adult gaming. Otherwise, I'd just be making a generic video on what makes a game good. So let's immediately address the elephant in the room, the sex scenes. I may be in the minority here, but I personally don't believe that art is actually that important in these games. Of course, having quality visuals is a plus, but it's not what I feel has the most potential to affect the players emerging. What I think is most important is something that'll probably sound pretty boring, and that thing is tonal consistency. The sex scenes need to feel like they fit in with everything else. If the switch between the regular story and the sex is too jarring, it can just take you right out of the experience. A game that did this very well was Evan Eagle. Evan Eagle is a game that has sex scenes that are very over the top. Imagine every stereotype about adult Japanese media and you've got a pretty good idea what's up. While this would be very immersion breaking in a lot of games, the main character of Evan Eagle is this hypersexual goofball and there are comedic skits throughout the game directly referencing the game's sexual nature. It gets to the point where it's borderline fourth wall breaking. So when the game switches from this self-aware, crazy story to an over-the-top sex scene, it all flows perfectly. One piece of media I think didn't do so well in this regard was Nekapata. And yes, I'm aware that Nekapata is a linear visual novel rather than a game, but it's too perfect of an example. So I bought Nekapata literally because of the memes, and was surprised to find that it was actually a heartwarming, well-written visual novel with lovable characters and a solid story arc. It was like something taken straight out of a light-hearted slice of life anime. But of course, the sex scenes were just as over the top as Evan Eagle, with tons of screaming, bodily fluids, and a completely unrealistic depiction of male stamina and performance. The sex scenes completely took me out of the experience, and a lot of the times I found myself skipping through them because they simply didn't mesh with the rest of the story. I get that they added these scenes because sex sells, but I think it could have been handled much more carefully, and arguably, Nekapata was actually made worse because of these sex scenes, which really isn't a good look for an adult game. The sex scenes in an adult game need to align with the rest of the game, and it's surprising how often that's just blatantly ignored. 
And next up, there's the ratio. No, I'm not talking about a hot take on Twitter, I'm talking about the ratio of sex to game. This is a bit of a tough one to pin down because there's no one correct answer. Each game will be a little bit different. If there's too much sex, the gameplay itself will feel like a chore, whereas if there's not enough, the player will likely get discouraged along the way. Remember, we're talking about adult games that are presented as adult games. Games like the Witcher series have softcore sex scenes, but they don't really count since that ends up being side content rather than a part of the core experience. Figuring out a proper ratio is extremely difficult because there are so many features that go into any given adult game. Let's go back to Honeypop. The way the adult bits are woven into the game is that in order to sleep with each character, you have to complete four dates with that character. After each one, you'll receive a picture of that character, which will get progressively more and more explicit until you eventually score. This is a pretty good way of doing things in my opinion because it functions as a reward system which keeps giving you a little more as you progress, encouraging you to continue. And of course, the fact that the gameplay is very enjoyable helps a ton. If the game sucked, this drip feed tactic would probably not go over so well. But then let's look at a game called Devil's Legion. This game has no adult CGs, or at least none that I can tell, as I haven't actually finished the game. But instead, the adult content is a part of the gameplay. See, the whole gimmick is that you control a horde of monsters who use sex as their means of disabling opponents. Obviously, this means you're going to be seeing a bunch of naughty things while playing the game normally. This leads to a much higher ratio of sex to game, but I think that this also works because it fits the overall feel of the game. Additionally, because this is used as a feature of the game rather than a reward structure, it integrates into the gameplay very smoothly. That being said, this type of game wouldn't have any appeal to those who really only want to play adult games 10 minutes at a time, so there is a trade-off there. And then, in addition to needing a good ratio, it's important for developers to consider how the sex is spaced out and how it integrates with the rest of the game. And again, there is no one right answer for this. However, in my opinion, more often than not, it's better for the sex scenes in these types of games to be relatively consistent in terms of timing, so the player will be seeing them throughout their experience. Of course, it doesn't mean they all have to just fall into your lap, so to speak. One game that I think is pretty interesting in that regard is, once again, Evan Eagle. I'm not going to go too in-depth because I already made a full video on this game, but Evan Eagle is an adult JRPG and you'll encounter sex scenes throughout the game's story at a fairly even pace. However, in addition to this, there is a love gauge that fills up as you complete battles, and once it's full you can unlock a new story sequence with one of the protagonist's partners. Usually this will include another adult CG, although not always. The one thing I like about this system is while you're definitely encouraged to go and unlock these scenes as soon as possible for the super useful in-game rewards that come alongside them, and so you can start filling up the love gauge again, you're by no means forced to do so. If you're currently too invested in the current arc of the main story, or even if you just want to clear an area of monsters or collectibles, you can choose to postpone these scenes for as long as you like with no real downside. There have certainly been times for me when playing adult games where I'm genuinely enjoying either the gameplay or the story and a poorly timed sex scene actually annoys me more than anything else. It's a tough thing to get right, and as much as I try to be as knowledgeable as possible about my video topics, I just can't think of a good way to be sure you get it right without trial and error. I know there's a pretty big stigma against adult gaming, especially here in the US where we seem to be kinda weird about sex, but that doesn't mean that we should just accept any crap that comes our way. While I really don't care if a game has adult content or not as long as it's good, I definitely can believe that there are some who prefer it and that they aren't necessarily just a bunch of degenerates. Just like I appreciate when media explores horrific, demented evil, I'm sure that there are others that appreciate when sexuality is explored and showcased. Adult gaming has a lot of garbage. But because we as humans like sex, it's not called out as often as it would be in more clothed games. I know good adult games exist, we just have to make sure that it becomes the industry standard. Well, I've said my piece. As always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.